Hello and welcome to another Baselight tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about blending things in Baselight. So we're going to briefly have a look at the blend strip and we're also going to dig into the blend control panel where you can view and edit your blends inside a grading layer. So let's get into it and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, first of all, if we have a look at uh, this shot here, you can see that it's fairly overexposed. This is a prime candidate we're adding a blend strip with a blend mode might be a really good way to start this shot. I'm going to go ahead and copy this with Command C, and I'm going to paste it again with Command F, force paste. I'm going to go ahead and add a blend strip with the keyboard shortcut Alt B. Again, you can add that up in the insert menu if you forget that shortcut. Now you can see that our duplicated clips are both visible, the base layer and the blend layer. And you see over here in the parameters view that we have mix, mode, and color treatment options to play with. So if we go ahead and click the mode button, you can see we have all of the standard blend mode types, the darken blend modes, the lighten blend modes, the contrast blend modes, the inversion blend modes, and the component blend modes. If you need a refresher on blend modes and what they do, I've linked a really fantastic Photoshop blend mode tutorial. So in this case, my image is overexposed. I'm gonna to wanna to use a darken blend mode, specifically multiply. The darken blend modes will darken your image by blending through the lower luminance value pixels and leaving the higher value pixels alone. Now that we've set the mode, we can just change the mix to get our perfect sort of level. So that's probably good around 75%. That's the blend strip, really nice and easy. So let's go ahead and talk about the blend control panel. So we've got a shot here, um, it's slightly overexposed, so I'm gonna add a grade layer with the keyboard shortcut P. I'm gonna go into my film grade and just bring down the exposure a little bit. That's good. Um, I'm gonna add a, another grading layer with P. And I'm gonna go to my video grade and just do something crazy, just add a little bit of purple or something, okay? Let's just name them for clarity. And I'm just going to go ahead and change the color because we can. Okay, so we've got our main layer, we drop the exposure, and then we made it pink. What we do is if we go over to this bottom right-hand corner of the parameters view, you can see that we have a blending section. So just as you would expect, this pink layer is currently fully active, so that's what that zero means. And if we go ahead and drag the slider to 100%, you'll see that the layer becomes fully transparent. So on the left, fully opaque. So that's nice and simple. But you can see here, we click on this icon here, it opens up a really confusing looking panel. So let's dig into what that is. I'll just quickly adjust the UI over here so we can see what we're doing. Okay, really simply, this is an expanded view of this little slider. On this side, on the left hand side, so it's gonna start from the layer input above, which is this exposure down strip. That's where base light is taking the input. And then it's gonna travel along this A side. And you can see this is where we have our grade operation, which in this case is the pink that we've added. So it comes down from the layer input, the grade operations are applied, and then it gets mixed down to here, which currently we're mixing fully towards the A side. If we drag the slider all the way to the right, now we're following the B path. And you can see that because our grade operations are over here, we're completely ignoring the pink straight from our layer input down to our mix. The first thing that you can do to sort of start playing around with this panel is you can see that we've got a blend with toggle here and we can actually, instead of using the layer input, uh, which is again, our exposure down strip, we can go, no, we don't wanna reference that. We actually wanna reference the raw image. So now you can see that it's uh, referring to the brighter raw image. So this is uh, this strip here. It's ignoring this exposure down strip. And when we're fully mixed on the right hand side on the B path, uh, we're just gonna have our raw image. So if we click out of this and then I scroll up, you can see that this raw strip is the same as the strip on this layer because we've actually completely bypassed um, the exposure down input and our pink input strip. So you can already see that there's lots of things that you can do with this panel. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to our layer input. It's blending fully back to our B side, which is currently just the exposure down. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag this back down to reintroduce the pink layer. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead now and add a third layer, and we're gonna call this one Cool Circle Shape. And I'm gonna add a vignette, remove the feather, G to jump to the gray layer. 
and I'm going to go ahead and just neutralize some of this purple with a bit of green. Okay, so we've got our green circle shape here, pink layer, our exposure down strip, and then our raw image. So what we're going to do is we're going to click our circle shape and we're going to open up the blend control panel. And now you can see that we have the inside and outside component to this grade operation stack. What's really cool about this is if I wanted this circle to be more green, not to just neutralize this purple, but to actually you know, be a really vivid green, what I could do is I could go, well, I don't want this circle shape and this grade adjustment to affect the pink layer. I want this to reference my raw clip. So I can go ahead on the inside and hit raw image. And now you can see what's happened. So we've got the raw image feeding into the inside of the shape, which is a circle. And now our green grading adjustment is doing a lot more than it was because it's not competing with this purple, it's hitting directly the raw. So if we go back to the layer input, you can see that the difference is huge. And the layer input above, which is the pink layer, that's going to the outside of the shape as per normal. And we're mixing fully down the A path to our current mix. Now, if we were to mix the slider to the B path, we would expect our green shape to vanish. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, nice. Say that we wanted that intensity of green, but we wanted to include the exposure down layer. Well, we could also go to a numbered layer. So it's currently pointing at layer zero, which is our clip, but I could click this now and go, you know what? I want this inside shape to actually be referring to the exposure down layer. That's the correct exposure. Click on that. And you can see that now that is jumped down. So a very powerful tool set. That's only the tip of the iceberg for this one. You can go ahead and add blend modes and you can get really, really complicated with it. It's really good to understand um, what this can do. And it's actually quite fun to have a play with. So, you know, it doesn't need to be as complicated as this. It can be really simple, especially if we go ahead and delete that. It can be really simple to play around with. One other note, you can actually change where your grade operations sit um, on the A side or B side. So now we're currently mixing to the A side, which is ignoring the pink layer. And if we mix to that, we get our pink layer back. So there's a lot of things to uncover with this panel, but hopefully that's given you a good overview of some of the stuff that you can do. And now hopefully you understand the interface behind the blend control panel. Guys, that is the end of the video for today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you get value from these videos, uh, please consider go checking out my Patreon account. If you want more learning, the best way is if you get in touch with me via my Google form, which is in the YouTube description below, um, and apply for some coaching. It's a really fun process, man. You can sit down with Baselight student and I can sort of explain anything that you might have questions on. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.